hello. In this video, I will show you how to use this new reset group of properties here. And reset allows you to reset original object transform, uh, which means position uh, rotation scale. It allows you to reset damage. Also, uh, this is where you can define what will happen with the object after it will be demolished, whether it will be destroyed or just deactivated. And also, it allows you to reuse meshes for fragment meshes or fragments fragment itself. So first, I will show you how to work this uh, two check boxes. So for this rock, I set my reset to transform, and for this column, I will reset damage. So you can see I have my damage enabled, and I'm collecting it by the collision. So I hit start. Nothing special. Uh, this column got some damage, and I can reset it. And for this rock, I will reset, and it will goes back to its original position. So in this way, you can uh, kind of reset your object to its original position and all the properties, including all private properties. Uh, in case you loaded your scene or maybe you need to reset your object for some other reason. Uh, also, obviously, you can reset uh, everything using reset widget method. This is how this button works here. And well, that was easy. Uh, next example shows you post demolition properties. So this is where we can define what will happen with object. For this rock, I set it to destroy with delay, and this is delay in seconds, uh, which you can use to define how many, how much time you want to stay inside scene deactivated. In case you will need to get some information from demolished object, like uh, get fragments created or collision point, etc. But after all, you will not need to have the subject in the scene, so it will be destroyed. And for this column, I set here deactivate to reset. In this case, it will be deactivated and, well, it will stay in scene forever. But in this case, you will be able to reset it back, which means activate it back and uh, demolish it again. So uh, let me show you. So here you can see my rock. I will select and I already pre cached some fragments here. You can see some meshes. So now it will be demolished. And here you can see this deactivated rock destroy object. And after five seconds, it will be destroyed. But here you can see this column, it stay inside scene, deactivated. So at some point I may need, I want, if I want, I can just click reset. I will get back. And as you can see, it removed all its fragments. So this is also, I will show you uh, this group of properties, how to use fragments. So this is how post demolition uh, group of properties works. And now finally, I will show you how to reuse uh, meshes and fragments. And I guess this is the most useful um, feature of this uh, reset uh, group of properties. So here I have three examples. And as you can see, I will demolish this column in all these references. So there are three options here for mesh. First one is destroy. So uh, after object will be demolished, it will uh, cache some fragments. Then it will create fragments using this cached mesh. And this, if you will set here destroy and reset object, it will erase all cached meshes. So next time object will be demolished again, it will have to fragment object again. Uh, so this is the slowest way. But in this case, you can, let's say, if you want to uh, fragment your object at some point, a, and next time it could be fragmented at some other point, you obviously will need to destroy all cached meshes because it will use the same meshes. And uh, let's say if at first demolition, uh, you hit your object at the top, so it cre create, uh, created more tiny fragments at the top. And next time you will hit it at the bottom, so you will need to destroy all cached meshes. So it will refragment it again and create more tiny fragments at the bottom. But in case you don't care about uh, fragment uh, uh, pattern, well, then you can keep this uh, meshes. And next time, it will not have to, at second or an other demolition, it won't uh, have to demolish object fragment it again. So it will use already cached mesh, which means it will work much faster. For this one, for second one, I use second way. This we use input mesh. So inputting mesh means that um, this is a kind of middle process of fragmented object. Uh, before fragment object, you have to send this uh, mesh inside the shutter. And this is, uh, it takes some time, not too much, but still it takes some time. Uh, 
maybe few milliseconds. But again, this is something you need to do just once. Even though you will fragment object uh, with different pattern, uh, you still can use the same input mesh because that will be always the same. So again, no reason if you already uh, fragmented and demolished your object once, you don't need to uh, input mesh again and waste your time doing this. In this case, uh, you can set here use input mesh, but again, uh, actual fragment mesh still will be erased, so it will have to fragment object again. And again, this will take some time. And for second one, I said here we use fragment meshes, so this is the fastest way. In this case, it will just use the same meshes. So now let me start play mode. And um, I will set here, as you can see, mesh demolition, I set here 40, and for this kind of object, it's not, not like it high poly, but uh, it has average amount of triangles, but 40 fragments is probably too much for this such uh, for demolishing such object in runtime and uh, so I made this on purpose just to show you this little uh, freeze at the demolition so you can see it took some time if I will set it again not uh, rock but column as well now you can see what every time I reset it always freezes for a moment because it has to input the mesh and then fragment object again and for this one i will i set it to uh, reuse input mesh so let me initialize it so again it still uh, took some time because uh, let me move it away still it takes some time because uh, input mesh doesn't save much time and for this column, it still has to refragment everything because I only reusing input mesh, so it still takes some time. But in case you have high poly object, uh, it may save a lot of time because inputting high poly object, uh, well, also takes some time. And for this one, finally, the fastest and the most useful way is reusing actual fragment meshes. Uh, so here's my column. And now you can see that uh, here inside information, it's, it doesn't show anything because it has no meshes, it has no fragments yet. So I will break it. Now you can see it has here, it says here pre-cached unit meshes 38 and fragments 38. And this time I will reset it again. Now you can see, even though I reset the subject, it still says here pre-cached unity meshes 38, which means it already has has all these meshes from previous demolition. So this time it will only need to create fragments, actual game objects, and apply all the components, but it won't uh, waste its time for fragmenting object. So here you can see this time it was fragmented much faster almost instant. Now let's see it's about 30 frames per second now. And again just to show you the difference I uh, will use this one. So you can see now it also says pre-cached unity meshes 38 and fragments 38 but when I reset it it erase all the information so every time oh it seems like I'm demolishing a rock as well which I don't want to do so let's take a look again it took some time here you see you saw that it uh, frame per second drop to 15 and next time I reset it again it's dropping almost to 15 frames which is not good so every time it takes this additional time to fragment and for this example it takes it this time for the first demolition but every next demolition works fine also uh, keep in mind that for high poly object you can use 
uh, this runtime caching. So I can enable it and set here, set here, let's say by fragments per frame, and maybe create by three fragments every frame, maybe two. So in this way, you can demolish your object first time using a runtime caching. So again, it will not, it, will, it won't, uh, frame per second won't drop too much. And when next time I will reset it, it will already will have all these meshes. So in this way, you can demolish object only once and then reuse these meshes. And also you can make it work even faster reusing actual fragments instead of meshes. And here I also have three, ref three examples. And uh, using fragments to use, there are three options. First one is destroy and uh, obviously it will Whenever you will reset your object, it will destroy already created fragments because you don't want to have them anymore. In case you loaded your scene, you don't need to lay them on the ground again. First, next, second uh, way is to actually reusing them. In this way, uh, in this case, they also will be removed because they will be reused. And third way is preserve. In this case, in this case, you can uh, use the same object, but all its fragments will be will stay in scene after reset. So uh, when this object will be demolished, it will have to create all fragments again. But in case you have reused fragment meshes uh, feature on, it will, again, it will be much faster. It only will have to create objects, just like in previous example. So again, let me show you how this works. So first one is destroy. I break the subject. Oh, sorry, again, I need to turn off demolition for rock. So now I will reset my column and it will destroy all the fragments and get back. Actually, let me reset with rock. As you can see, this time it are using meshes because I have the here mesh. Well, for this column, I have reused meshes. So every time I reset, I don't uh, spend any time on fragmented object. And, but this example just show, shows you that all these fragments, they just, uh, they were destroyed and new fragments uh, were created every time I reset and demolish object again. And for this example, I said to my column, to reuse these fragments. And let me turn off again. So again, it took some time to fragment it the first time. Now I will reset, reset rigid and it will reuse, it will reuse the same fragments. Uh, let me show you how it works. So here's my fragment. You can see all the fragments goes to this refire manager. So this is uh, a root of all my fragments. Here they are. And if I will click on reset, now you can see they still stay inside scene, but they deactivate it. So when the subject will be demolished, they will be activated again. This way you can reuse fragments. So this is the fastest way. You can create like hundreds of fragments and uh, you, you will not need to fragment object or even create fragments every time. You will have to do this just once and then you can reuse them again and again. And for this example, I set here preserve. In this case, let me show you. So I demolish an object just once. And next time I'm resetting here, you can see that fragments stay in scene and this is why uh, my uh, column explodes instantly because it interpenetrates with fragments and it instantly demolishes and create new fragments. Uh, and also I can see that since I have here reused fragment meshes, it creates all the fragments almost instantly. Let me show you again. Uh, initialize rock. And now I will reset. 
Well, I guess it's better to show this on this rock, so I will make it runtime demolishable. Uh, some amount of fragments. I don't want to demolish my column. And for the stroke, I will set here preserve and uh, use fragment meshes. So now we'll reset, and you can see all the fragments stay inside scene. But my column, we're using meshes from first fragmentation. So here it says pre cache unity meshes 36. So I can reset it anytime and create even more fragments. This way you can uh, kind of uh, simulate like it, there are a lot of objects uh, demolishing all the time, but uh, you actually will use just one object. And it's probably a good idea to use this uh, with fading. So fading, let me turn on like scale down so it will fade quickly. Maybe a couple of seconds here, a couple of seconds here. In this half fading world, just make sure all the fragments uh, went uh, destroyed from the scene. So I can reset and reset again and reset again and so on. And as you can see, all demolitions, uh, demolitions almost instant, frame per second, there are 100 frame per second, maybe, well, not 100, maybe 16. But in this way, you can create kind of effect when something dropping and uh, getting demolished, although it will be just uh, one object, the same object, and uh, if were, it will be fragmented only once at first demolition, and after that, after that, it will only use already cached meshes. Uh, also, just in case, I want to mention that uh, this reset uh, of fragments and meshes it works not only with runtime, you also can use all this awake pre cache or awake fragment and other uh, demolition types. So, I intentionally showed you high polar object with a uh, high amount of fragments uh, getting demolished again and again, but uh, you obviously can uh, use not runtime but awake pre cache. So in this case, you won't need to, you won't uh, get all this um, frame drops. So when you will start, let me show you, I will set here, reuse fragment meshes. So it's uh, reuse fragment meshes options here. And I will use awake pre-cache. So now, uh, when I will demolish this column, there won't be frame per second drop because all the meshes already were pre-cached. You can see, but now I also create fragments and again, I can reset it and use the same meshes from uh, which, uh, meshes which I got in wake. So every demolition type works with uh, resetting object. Uh, I guess that there was something I have to mention. So that was reuse, uh, I mean reset, uh, I guess that will be helpful for a lot of people. Uh, thank you for watching.